Good morning everybody. Our today's lecture is on compartments of peritoneal cavity and their clinical significance part second. The learning objectives for my today's class are at the end of this session students should be able to describe anatomy of right extra peritoneal space, enumerate and describe left subphrenic spaces, describe boundaries and contents of infracolic compartment, describe spread of infection in peritoneal cavity on the basis of anatomy. In the right extraperitoneal space. This space coincides with the bare area of the liver, superiorly bounded by anterior layer of the coronary ligament, inferiorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament, posteriorly by diaphragm in contact with the bare area. Left side of this space is bounded by groove or inferior vena cava. On the right side is right triangular ligament. Clinical importance of this space lies in the fact an omebic liver abscess in this space may rupture directly into the right pleural cavity. This space is also a site for extraperitoneal portosystemic anastomosis between intraperitoneal branches of the right portal vein and retroperitoneal systemic, systemic veins that drain into azygous, hemazygous and lumbar veins. As shown in this diagram, liver is enclosed in coronary ligaments. The superior layer of the coronary ligament covers the anterior superior surface of the liver, whereas the inferior layer of the coronary ligament covers the visceral surface of the liver. Between the superior and inferior layer of the coronary ligament, an area of the liver is not covered by peritoneum and it lies directly in contact with under surface of the diaphragm separated from it by connective tissue. This area of the liver which is not covered by peritoneum is called the bare area. Between the superior and inferior layer of the coronary ligament on the right side is right triangular ligament and base of this bare area is formed by groove for inferior vena cava. This triangular area which is bounded superiorly by the anterior layer of the coronary ligament, inferiorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament and on right side by right triangular ligament. The base of this triangular area is formed by groove for inferior vena cava. Lies directly opposed to the under surface of the diaphragm. So the boundaries of extra peritoneal area are anteriorly there is bare area of the liver. Posteriorly it is bounded by the under surface of the diaphragm. On the right side it is bound, bounded by right triangular ligament, superiorly it is bounded by inferior layer of the coronary ligament, inferiorly it is bounded by inferior layer of the coronary ligament and on the left side it is bounded by groove or inferior vena cava. As already said, its clinical importance is that it is one of the sites for portosystemic anastomosis and amoebic liver abscesses may rupture directly into the right peritoneal cavity from the bare area of liver. Left subphrenic spaces as already said are left anterior intraperitoneal space, left posterior intraperitoneal space, left extraperitoneal space. Left anterior intraperitoneal space is also called left subdiaphragmatic space. It, its boundaries are superior boundaries formed by anterior layer of left triangular ligament. Anterior boundaries anteriorly it is bounded by anterior abdominal wall. Posterior boundaries formed by anterior superior surface of liver. On the right side it is bounded by falciparum ligament. Inferiorly and to the left the space is open. As shown in this diagram falciparum ligament divides the liver into right and left anatomical lobes. Left sub and left anterior subphrenic space is bounded superior by anterior layer of the coronary ligament. Left anterior intraperitoneal space it is also called left subdiaphragmatic space its boundaries are superior boundary is formed by anterior layer of the left triangular ligament. Anteriorly it is bounded by anterior abdominal wall. Posteriorly it is bounded by anterior superior surface of the liver. On the right side it is bounded by falciparum ligament. Inferiorly and to the left the space is open. As shown in this diagram falciparum ligament divides the liver into right and left anatomical lobes. Left anterior subphrenic space is bounded superiorly by anterior layer of left triangular ligament as shown in this diagram the boundaries of the 
left anterior subphrenic space are superiorly it is bounded by the anterior layer of the left triangular ligament anteriorly it is bounded by anterior abdominal wall posteriorly there is anterior superior surface of left anatomic lobe of liver on the right side it is bounded by falciparum ligament inferiorly and to the left the space is open left posterior intraperitoneal space is equivalent to lesser sac as already described left posterior extraperitoneal space is located in relation to the pier area of stomach and in front of diaphragm left suprarenal gland and upper part of the kidney as shown in this diagram liver lies under the right dome of diaphragm it has right and left lobes these lobes are separated from each other by falciform ligament thus dividing the liver into right and left anatomical lobe a right anterior subphrenic space can be appreciated to understand the boundaries of the right anterior peritoneal space go to your left hand between the posteriorly placed liver and anteriorly placed anterior abdominal wall and these five arrows represent the digits of hand the tips of the finger touch superior or anterior layer of the coronary ligament thumb is separated from the left lobe of the liver by falciparum ligament palmar aspect of the hand rests on the anterior superior surface of the liver which forms the posterior boundary while as the dorsum of the hand lies in contact with the anterior abdominal wall which represents the anterior boundary of right anterior intraperitoneal space right posterior intraperitoneal space is also called morrison's pouch or hepatorenal pouch of morrison and we put our hand between the posterior placed kidney and anteriorly placed liver the tips of fingers touch the inferior layer of the coronary ligament which forms the superior boundary of this space dorsum of the hand touches visceral surface of the liver which forms the inferior boundary of this space and palmar aspect rests on anterior surface of the kidney which is covered by parietal peritoneum and represents the posterior boundary of hepatorenal pouch of morrison left anterior intraperitoneal space is also called a left sub diaphragmatic space now again if we put our hand between the left lobe of the liver and outer surface of the diaphragm let us consider that this arrow represents our hand the tips of the fingers they touch again superior boundary of this space the dorsum of the hand lies against the anterior abdominal wall which forms the anterior boundary of this space and palmar aspect rests on the anterior superior surface of the liver which forms the posterior boundary of this space on the left side and inferiorly this space is open left posterior intraperitoneal space is also called lesser sac which has been already described infracolic compartment lies below the transverse colon and it is mesentery periorally it is bounded by transverse colon and it is mesentery on the right lateral side of it is ascending colon on the left lateral side is descending colon below and to the left of it is sigmoid colon the contents of infracolic compartment are coils of intestine ascending colon descending colon it is further divided into right and left infracolic spaces it lies below the transverse colon and it is mesentery it is bounded on the right side by ascending colon superiorly by transverse colon on the left side by descending colon inferiorly by sigmoid colon it is further divided by the root of mesentery into right and left compartments right compartment which is bounded by ascending colon transverse colon and root of the mesentery is a closed compartment as shown by this yellow triangular area is a closed space it is bounded on the right side by ascending colon superiorly by colon and inferiorly by root of the mesentery as shown by this dotted red line left infracolic space is bounded superiorly by root of the mesentery on the left side by descending colon and inferiorly by sigmoid colon open space it communicates with the pelvic cavity so infection is can go from pelvic cavity into the left infracolic space or vice versa on either side of the ascending colon there is a paracolic gutter so on the right side there is right lateral and right medial paracolic gutters right lateral paracolic gutter as shown by this red arrow 
communicate superiorly with the supracolic compartment and inferior with the pelvic cavity. So infections can go from pelvic cavity to the hepatorenal pouch of Morrison through right lateral paracolic gutter or they can go in the reverse direction. In contrast, on the left side there is left paracolic gutter. This gutter does not communicate with the supracolic compartment. This is due to the presence of phrenicocolic ligament on the left side as shown by this green arrow. So infections from the pelvic cavity can not go to the supracolic compartment through left lateral paracolic gutter. Communication is between supra and infracolic compartments. These communications are important for the spread of the infection. The supracolic and infracolic compartments are connected by paracolic gutters, which lie between the posterior lateral abdominal wall and lateral aspect of the ascending or descending colon. So right lateral paracolic gutter, it acts as a communicating link between the pelvic cavity and the supracolic compartment. That is why it is shown by the red arrow. That means infections can go from pelvic cavity to the supracolic compartment. Left lateral paracolic gutter, it is shown by this black dotted black dotted arrow. It does not communicate with the supracolic compartment. It is separated from the supracolic compartment by the by phrenicocolic ligament. Thus, infections cannot go through the supracolic compartment from pelvic cavity through left lateral paracolic gutter. Supread of infections from pelvic cavity to supracolic compartment. As shown in this diagram, infections can go from pelvic cavity to supracolic compartment through right lateral paracolic gutter. Infections can also go from pelvic cavity to left infracolic compartment. Infections cannot supread from pelvic cavity to the supracolic compartment through left paracolic Gutter. This is due to the presence of phrenicocolic ligament on the left side. Root of the mesentery also forms a boundary of right superior infracolic compartment. Thus, converting right superior infracolic compartment into a closed sac. So, infections cannot go from pelvic cavity into the right superior infracolic compartment or in either direction. Peritoneal reflection in female pelvis. In contrast to the males, in females, uterus lies between anteriorly placed urinary bladder and posterior place it rectum. So there are two pouches. One pouch lies between the rectum and posterior superior surface of the uterus. This pouch is called recto uterine pouch of Douglas. The second pouch lies between urinary bladder and anterior inferior surface of uterus called vesico uterine pouch. Clinical importance. Pouch of Douglas being most dependent part of the female pelvis in standing position, the fluid collection is do occur there. And the drainage of these fluid collections is done through the posterior forneck of vagina. Procedure is called caldosynthesis. Drainage of fluid from the uterine pouch of Douglas through a needle inserted through the posterior forneck of the vagina is called the caldosynthesis. It can be used to extract fluid from the peritoneal cavity or to drain a pelvic abscess in rectal uterine pouch. Exploration of the rectal uterine pouch by giving an incision through the posterior fornix of vagina is called posterior colpotomy. So in male we have rectovesical pouch but in females we have rectal uterine pouch and clinical anatomy of the peritoneal cavity. Before going to the clinical anatomy of peritoneal cavity, let us keep in mind early clinical exposure to the students of first year. So let me discuss this problem with the students of first year as an early clinical exposure to them. An 85-year-old patient suffering from carcinoma of the stomach presents with malignant ascites and dyspnea. The consultant decides to go for paracentesis to give relief to the patient and ask his resident to drain the fluid. What are the various steps the resident has to follow? Ascites is defined as accumulation of excess fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Causes are multiple. The common causes are trauma, tumor, tuberculosis and liver diseases. Small amounts of fluid in the peritoneal cavity get absorbed of its own. Large effusions need drainage and this procedure is called paracentesis abdominis. What is the technique of paracentesis abdominis? Before going for paracentesis abdominis, explain the procedure, benefits, risks, complications and alternative options to the patient or the patient's representative. Obtain a signed informed consent, empty the patient's bladder either voluntarily or with a Foley's catheter. Position the patient and prepare the skin around the entry site 
with an antiseptic solution. Present septomnis is a procedure used to drain fluid from the peritoneal cavity and needle inserted through the anterior lateral abdominal wall into the peritoneal cavity. The indications for this procedure are therapeutic, where excess amount of fluid collectors gives dyspnea to the patient who want to drain the fluid. Diagnostic, this fluid can be subject to the microscopic examination to find the cause of effusion. For example, in case of malignancy, we will find their malignant cell. In case of other infections, cytology will tell us about the diagnosis. Small amounts of fluid in peritoneal cavity are picked up by ultrasonography. USG guided paracentesis is done to reduce the post procedure complications. First MBBS students can be made to learn this procedure on a mannequin in sickle lab for early clinical exposure. Areas to be awarded based on the anatomical knowledge of first year students. The following areas are to be awarded based on anatomical knowledge right hypochondrium as we can injure the liver, left hypochondrium to prevent injury to the spleen, epigastric region, left lobe of the liver lies there, hypogastrium. Hypogastrium normally it is filled with the coils of intestine, but urinary bladder being a pelvic organ, but when distended with new urine, it can go up to the level of umbilicus, so we don't want to puncture the urinary bladder. Areas with previous scar because there may be underlying adhesions. One of the complications of doing laparotomy is post-operative adhesions. So areas of previous scar where a cut loop may be adherent to the anterior aspect of the anterior abdominal wall. When we insert the needle, there is possibility that this needle may enter the lumen of this viscous. Under normal circumstances, the tip of the needle, when it strikes the viscous being freely mobile in the abdominal cavity, does not get punctured. But in case of adhesions, when it, the viscous is fixed, there is possibility needle may enter inside the viscous. So areas with pre previous surgical scar are to be avoided during paracentesis. Precautions should be also taken to avoid injury to the inferior epigastric artery. I want to summarize my lecture as Peritoneal cavity is divided into greater and lesser sacs. These sacs communicate with each other through foramen of Winslow. Greater sac is further divided into supra and infracolic compartments by transverse colon and it is mesentery. The supracolic and infracolic compartments communicate with each other by right lateral paracolic gutter, but not through the left lateral paracolic gutter. There are four intraperitoneal subphrenic spaces right anterior, right posterior, left anterior and left posterior. Pouch of Morrison is the most dependent part of peritoneal cavity in supine position. Infection can spread from pelvis into Morrison's pouch via right lateral paracolic cutter. Now let us go to a quiz based on this lecture. You will be provided an MCQ with four options. You have to find the most accurate one. Our first question is which of the following statements is not true about the peritoneal cavity? A. It is divided into greater and lesser sacs. B. It is lined by mesothelium. C. It, op it is open in females. D. Is not used for dialysis. The wrong answer is D. It is not used for dialysis. Which of the following is a closed space? Right lateral paracolic gutter, right medial paracolic gutter, lesser sac, left inferior infracolic compartment. The right medial paracolic gutter is a closed space, while as the other spaces they communicate with each other and they act as communication between supra and infracolic compartments. Which of the following structures is not included in the boundaries of a pupillae foramen? Lesser omentum, quadrate lobe of the liver, quadrate lobe of the liver, inferior vena cava. Superior boundary of a pupillae foramen is formed by the quadrate lobe of the liver and not by the quadrate lobe of liver. So wrong option is C. Which of the following areas can be used for paracentesis abdominis? Right hypogastrium, epigastrium, hypogastrium, 5 cm lateral to the umbilicus. So correct option is D. 5 cm lateral to the umbilicus. Our next question is which of the following is most dependent part of female T in supine position? Zyco uterine pouch, B pouch of Douglas, C recto uterine pouch, D hepatorenal pouch. The correct option is hepatorenal pouch. 
Which of the following causes fluid accumulation after rupture in lesser sac? Rupture of a duodenal ulcer, rupture of an ulcer lying on the anterior wall of stomach, rupture of an ulcer on the posterior wall of the stomach, duodenal ulcer. The correct answer is rupture of an ulcer on the posterior wall of stomach because posterior wall of the stomach forms the anterior boundary of momental bursa or lesser sac. Which of the following causes effusion in lesser sac? A rupture of a duodenal ulcer, a rupture of an ulcer lying on anterior wall of stomach, a rupture of an ulcer on posterior wall of stomach, duodenal perforation. The correct option is a rupture of an ulcer lying on the posterior wall of stomach. Momental bursa is formed as a result of rotation of stomach along horizontal axis, rotation of stomach along longitudinal axis, malrotation of the gut. D is rotation of stomach in anticlockwise direction. As already discussed, lesser sac is formed as a result of rotation of stomach 90 degrees along longitudinal axis. The next question is true statement about gastrocolic ligament is it is formed as a result of obliteration of space between second and third layer of greater momentum. B lies between greater curvature and sigmoid colon. C has five layers. D left gastric artery is a content of it. The correct option is A. It is formed as a result of obliteration of space between second and third layer of greater momentum. Our next question is, which of the following is an internal hernia? Femoral, B. Umbilical, C. Inguinal, D. Hernia in omental bursa. The correct option is D. Hernia in omental bursa is an internal hernia. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe my channel, press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads.
do not forget to subscribe my channel press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads